side, how you doing? Uh, it's a beautiful day, it's a warm week. It's a great place to be outside. Today we're continuing our Psalm series and we're gonna go into, we're gonna work through maybe the most famous Psalm, maybe the most famous chapter in the Bible, Psalm 23. If you've attended church or a funeral, uh, you've probably heard these words. Uh, in Psalm 23, David uh, uses two metaphors. One is a sheep and shepherds, that's the subject the subjects, and the second one is a feast or a banquet. And in both of those metaphors, God is the ultimate provider, takes care of everything in surprising circumstances. So we're gonna get into Psalm 23. And it starts like this, the Lord is my shepherd. Again, just like last week, we're gonna stop again, right there, the Lord is my shepherd. C.S. Lewis, uh, in, the problem, in his book, The Problem of Pain, has this quote. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. It immediately implies a profound yet practical working relationship between a human being and their maker. That thought alone should stir my spirit quicken my own sense of awareness and lend enormous dignity to myself as an individual. To think that God and Jesus Christ is deeply concerned about me as a particular person immediately gives great purpose and enormous meaning to my short sojourn upon this planet. Just right there, the Lord is my shepherd. This is a Psalm of David once again declaring the Lord is mine. And in this case, the Lord is my shepherd. And David knew all about shepherds and sheep. David was a shepherd when he was younger. He understood what that role of shepherd and sheep meant. And he's, it's like he's saying, look who's my shepherd, the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. For a sheep, everything, you've heard about that they're not the brightest of animals. Uh, and everything depends on their shepherd. It matters who their shepherd is is. Some are more caring, some are better at it than others. Uh, some pets treat their, or some pet owners treat their pets like family. And others, maybe there's more like, they're more like a, a farm dog, they're a part of the picture, but the care isn't quite there to that level. And it's kind of like, uh, well, it's like David is saying, the Lord is my shepherd, it's the best possible shepherd to have. Because the shepherd cares for the individual, the shepherd cares for David. In verse one, it starts with the Lord is my shepherd. And that second part of verse one is, I shall not want. In the New Living Translation, it says, I have all that I need. So the Lord is my shepherd. And since that is a truth, I have all that I need. Really? Have you ever felt that you have all that you need? If you have, that is wonderful. If you're in a state like that right now, that is amazing. Good for you. There's so many people that could have a lot to learn from you. You need to show us, teach us how to go about life like that. For the most part, we are a people, we are a human race that has lots of needs, lots of wants, lots of desires. But it all depends on what we think we want or we think we need. And isn't the fact that we always think we need something or we want something that's part of the problem? Anything that we want or need that takes us away from God, well, that desire is actually will be played out in sin. And it's really the reason we sin or make choices that don't embrace Jesus as Lord of our lives. And we as Christians are not immune to this. Often we're not content, always feeling that somehow the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. You know, we, we raise cattle growing up. There's cattle behind me. We're in a pasture right now. And we raise cattle growing up and some cows, they're always testing the boundaries. Some are always testing the fence, testing for weak spots. If the fence is down, they are out. And they're always looking to the other side of the fence and go, it must be better out there. And there could be lots of food in this fence, better food in this fence, but they're still looking outside. That there's some drive in them that says, I will not be satisfied but what I have right here. And we can have everything we need. We can be rich and still go, I don't have everything I want. I don't have any, everything I need. It depends what shepherd we are following. Um, my friend, uh, 
Justin Bieber. Uh, we are friends. My kids say we're not friends. They say you're just following him on Instagram, but I feel we have a kinship there. He's Canadian as well. Um, he, uh, there was this fan, just this really interesting exchange, uh, uh, I believe it was about 10 days ago. And in it, on his Instagram page, uh, Mr. Bieber talks about how he is practicing being content, how he needs to look to Jesus for his contentment, not what this world has to offer. And right away, there were these comments about, who are you to talk? Who are you to say anything? You have everything this world could possibly offer and more. And his exchange back to them, his response is, anyone who has to live basically with, and I'm paraphrasing, anyone who has to go, go through what I go through, realizes quite quickly that does not bring happiness, that does not bring contentment, all this world has to offer. The grass is not greener on the other side. And he really hearkens everything back to who Jesus is. Now, whatever you make of Justin and his walk, it's just fascinating to hear his response on Instagram. So who are we trusting? What do we want? Are we looking to the world to assage or give our value and our identity and our worth? Is that, is that where we're looking? Or are we looking to our true shepherd? And then he leads, me in, he leads me to rest. He lets me rest in green meadows, in green pastures. He leads me beside peaceful streams, the New Living says. Now there's a book, Philip Keller. Uh, if you do some research on Psalm 23, there's so many uh, pastors and other people who reference this book from Philip Keller, written around 1970. And it's a book, uh, and the title is A Shepherd's Take, A Shepherd's Look at, at Psalm 23. So Philip Keller was a shepherd, and he writes about Psalm 23 from his experiences. And here's, and we're gonna quote him a few times in the next few minutes. And he says this, the strange thing about sheep is that because of their very makeup, it is almost impossible for them to be made to lie down unless four requ require, that's a hard word to say, requirements are met. So they refuse to lie down unless they are free of all fear. Because of the social behavior within a flock, sheep will not lie down unless they are free from friction with others of their kind. If tormented by flies or parasites, sheep will not lie down. Only when free of these pests can they relax. Lastly, sheep will not lie down as long as they, need, they, are, in, they are in need of finding food. They must be free from hunger. It is significant that to be at rest, there must be a definite sense of freedom from fear, tension, aggravations, and hunger. Philip Keller mentions those four factors that prevent those sheep from finding peace. How peaceful are we as a people, as a culture? What's our context? Um, I think for many of us, this Psalm 23 is really timely and appropriate uh, for what we're feeling. We're not feeling that we are at peace or at rest. We're anxious, we're worried, and many of us are very thrown or tossed about by uncertain times. And there's basically three states of mind um, that we can live in. We can either live in a sense of anxiety, fear, or foreboding of what's to come, or we can live in a state of denial that we won't even, we're not even gonna face what's coming. We're just gonna kind of put blinders on and just drift through life and not really face what we need to. And the third is a state of quiet rest, which is talked about in Psalm 23. Now, if I asked you, which one would you prefer? I'm assuming most of us are going to choose that third option, a place of quiet rest with peaceful streams. And here David is under constant attack. It's not like David is in a world where it's all fine. He is feeling peace and he's just sitting in the garden. Here he is. He needs to be in a space of trust with his shepherd. So the first part, what are the four factors that need to be attended to when it comes to sheep? And a lot for us here. Uh, there's a lot for us here to learn as well. Man, I feel like we've talked about a few things in the past few months. We've talked about chickens. You've learned about chickens. You've learned about uh, plants in a greenhouse. You've learned about, we've learned about sunflowers. Uh, and here we are today. You're gonna learn about sheep a little bit. Fun facts about sheep and a little bit of cattle in there as well. So the first part is fear. We live a most uncertain life. Any hour can bring about change. You think, like your day is going to be this way and it suddenly isn't. I think the most 
clear story of this for me or experience I have had is uh, six years ago going to a, a Christmas gathering, Christmas Day. I have the family in the back and we're going to town, going to my mom's place and the rest of our family is waiting for us there. And we're all excited about the day. It's icy and uh, I'm going too fast for a corner and we slide off the road. And in that, in that moment, there's a back injury to Rachel, my wife, and long story short, Christmas Day is not like we intended. And for the next month, really, we're battling through getting better. We're getting, uh, she's battling through back surgery and some serious complica or implications and complications that come about for the next month. If you told me when we left on that little journey that our life would look very different, really from here on in, yeah, we have no clue. We live in a constant state of that illusion that we're in control. Uh, we, we live sometimes with this thought like, oh, this is how my day will look, but it's clear that it can change in a heartbeat, like ours did. Any hour can bring disaster, danger, diseases from unknown spaces. Life's full of hazards. With a flock of sheep, Philip, Philip Keller says, everything can be fine in a jackrabbit can bound up from behind a bush and the whole flock will scatter. And that is so true of us in life. Everything can be going fine and next thing you know, things are different, altered. The second source of fear from which a shepherd needs to really deliver care for his sheep is rivalry and competition within the flock itself. In every animal society, there is an order. In chickens, it's a pecking order. In cows, it's a horning order. Uh, with sheep, it's called the budding order. It's like there's the most dominant, dominant sheep and then they all take their place. If you had dairy, there's, they always come in the same order back to the barn. It's the lead cow and then the second and third and the fourth and they all have their place in the order. In every animal society, there, that seems to exist. Philip Keller in his book says that a shepherd's presence throws a, diff presence throws a different light on the whole scene. With a word or two, the sheep stop their butting and settle down. The shepherd is the head of the flock. Rivalry, competition, if that's happening, it's hard to have peace. And where Jesus is present, there is no competition or rivalry. Luke 9, 46 uh, to 48. An argument started among the disciples as to which of them would be the greatest. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, took a little child and had him stand beside him. And then he said to them, Whoever welcomes this little child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. For it is the one who is least among you who is the greatest. It's not about pecking order. It's not about rivalry or competition. Don't worry about that stuff. That's not of God. The shepherd will care for you no matter what. And sometimes don't we lose sleep over rivalry, pecking order? People being chosen over us? Well, maybe that's just me. The third is pests. Sheep, especially in the summer, can be driven to absolute distraction, says Keller. By nasal flies, bot flies, warble flies, ticks. When tormented by these pests, it's literally impossible for them to lie down and rest. Instead, they are up and on their feet, stamping their legs, shaking their heads, ready to rush off into the bush for relief from the pests and brushing themselves. What's constantly bothering us? What are those pests that are in our lives that we constantly think about it? Do some, I don't know, do a self check-in. Like, what am I constantly bothered by? What wakes, when you wake up in the morning, what, what, are your, what are our first thoughts? What are the pests? What do we need to confess to God? As I say, talk about pests, there's a fly about my head. What is it? Give it to God. Let the shepherd control the pests in our lives. And the fourth part is hunger and thirst. Keller says again, a hungry, thirsty sheep is always on its feet, on the move, trying to satisfy that gnawing hunger, leaping the fence. When sheep are thirsty, they become restless and set out in search of water. If not led to good water, supplies of clean, pure water, they will often end up just drinking from the polluted potholes where they pick up internal parasites, livers, liver flukes, or other disease and germs. Isn't that true of us? 
where there can be clear water that brings life to our lives, we make choices and we choose the polluted water in life. We cho choose the polluted water of the world. It happens all the time. A good shepherd takes care of all of these factors in our lives. If we know our shepherd, we trust the shepherd. And then in verse three, in verse three, it says this, he renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name, glory to his name. Now in verse three, David talks about God guiding them along, him along the right paths. When sheep don't follow the right paths, they become lost and they can be really privy to danger all around them. And in really some really strange places, they can find themselves really in peril. Keller says this, as a shepherd, he says, sheep that have, um, there's, there's a name for sheep that become lost. And those are called cast sheep. Sheep that have rolled over on their backs, accidentally have no way to restore their footing. It sounds ridiculous, but it happens. They fall off the path, they go off the path, they lose their balance and they end up on their backs. Sheep that have rolled over on their backs accidentally have no way to restore their footing. They can't fix themselves. That condition is likely to be fatal unless the shepherd intervenes. Therefore, shepherds need to keep an accurate count of their sheep. When one is missing, chances are good. It will be helplessly lying on its back somewhere. And upon finding the cast sheep, the shepherd must help it get back on its feet and carefully support and massage it until the sheep's numbed muscles are renewed and its life is restored. The good shepherd makes it right, writes, our, writes us, puts us on our feet, and then that, really that muscle rub, that massage, breathing life into us, giving us our identity, following the ways of Jesus, getting a, to be a part of a community, all is about life being restored. And then verse four, it talks about the rod and the staff. They comfort me. The rod and the staff were comforting to the sheep. One is like protector, the one is kind of a guide, guiding the sheep with its hook. Both were intended for the sheep's benefit. Keep them safe, keep them on the right path. But mostly they're, they're comforting because they're in the hands of the right shepherd. A caring shepherd, the ultimate shepherd. All of us follow a shepherd. I'm just gonna close with this. All of us follow a shepherd. Like there's the lyrics of Bob Dylan that song, you gotta serve somebody. Like it may be the devil or it may be the Lord, but you're gonna have to serve somebody. Who are we serving? Jesus is the good shepherd. He's often talked about as the good shepherd in the New Testament. Uh, Jesus said, his very words are in John 10 verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep, sacrificial, loving, providing, everything we need, Jesus, the true reflection of God. That's our model, that's our savior, that's our redeemer. Jesus is our shepherd. Yeah, it, it's my hope that you know the good shepherd, that you know Jesus. Read Psalm 23, we'll go through the next, like verse, our chapter, our verse five and six next week. It talks about feast and banquet, but the theme is God will provide everything we need I just want to close in prayer. So Lord, I thank you for the words of Psalm 23 that you gave David and that we have to learn from and that we, Lord, can take comfort in because you provide everything we need. May we turn to you in all things and in all ways. We thank you for Jesus who is our good shepherd. Jesus, we can trust you and we thank you for that. May people, may, us, may we all have a deep desire to follow the one true shepherd because we're following somebody, Lord. May we follow you. Thank you, Lord, for the words of Psalm 23. In your name we pray these things, amen. Go with God, have a great week.